In this video, I'm going to replace a light switch with one of these new combination switch with a convenience plug on it as uh, I need an extra plug in my media room to plug stuff in. So uh, let's take a look at the process. So this is the switch I want to change. This controls a ceiling fan and I want to put one of these new combination switches on with a, that has a convenience plug, which will give me an outlet on the bottom as well as a switch on the top. Now this switch that I purchased is actually a three-way switch. That yellow tape that's on there is to remind you which is the normally closed side, but we're going to verify with a meter. So I'm just going to measure, show you my meters in continuity mode. When the switch is off, okay, that's your power input. That's the black wire that goes onto there. And between the black wire and the switch, if the switch is in the off position, it should energize the contact, which is on the down position. That would be for like a three-way switch. Now the switch is on, and now it's off. So if you're using a three-way switch, that would be for your traveler wires. Your two travelers would go out either side. There's the side that we're gonna use. When the switch is on, there it is. So that's for single pole operation. Now I can't stress enough before doing any work on electrical circuits, make sure you have the power turned off. Don't do what I'm doing here. I'm going to do this live because uh, I can't turn the power off. This uh, is the main feed that feeds the room and there are some things that can't be turned off in the room. So I'm gonna do this live, but for safety, turn the power off. I'm an electrician, so I know what I'm doing and I'm gonna follow all safe uh, practices to do this but just for your own safety, make sure the power is turned off before getting into any electrical plug or switch. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to remove the screws that hold the switch in place that we want to remove. Now this particular box, this is actually the main feed. So I'll show you when I get it open, but there's actually two circuits in here. There's 240 volts uh, between the two phases in this uh, switch. One, one phase sweet feeds the the switches that are here the other one and it also feeds other plugs in the room the other one's actually passed over to my uh, dedicated plug that's for my uh, t uh, my plasma screen so it's on its own circuit by itself now this only works if you have a neutral wire available in the box it will not work on a dead end type switch so what i'm doing now is i'm just determining which is the feed to the switch and which is the output so there's the 120 volts that's my feed in the switch is turned off so this is for the ceiling fan this one is obviously dead so the electrician I did this actually used the quick terminals on the back, which are not my favorite. I like to use the screw terminals. To remove these quick terminals, just put a screwdriver or something into it and press the little spring aside and pull it out. Now I gotta be careful to do this because of course this is a live circuit that I'm working on here. So I'm making sure I'm touching the tabs on there, which are of course not grounded. I'm also wearing insulated shoes and uh, I'm being careful not to touch the metal shank on the screwdriver. Otherwise I could get a bit of a jolt there. So now the hot wire is removed. I can now remove the output for the switch, which is going to the fan, which of course is dead. So now we're going to insulate that hot wire. But uh, before we do that, I'm just gonna verify that uh, we still have power on here. So this is show you guys that I am actually working on a 120 volt circuit. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to put a barrette over that live wire just to make sure that I don't accidentally contact it while I'm working on this because I'm going to be working here. There's not a lot of room in this box. As you'll see, the new the new switch plug combination is actually deeper than the original switch. So uh, it's gonna, I'm going to have fun getting this thing back together because, well, you'll see there's so many wires in this, this box here. I have to get the neutral wire out now because obviously I need neutral as well as hot because I'm putting in a, a plug. So this requires removing the other switch as uh, the neutral, all the junction wires are kind of in behind this one. So let's remove the second switch so I can access the wires and make the appropriate connections. If you notice the terminals are actually wrapped with tape, that's because I put the switch in a few years ago when I took it from a single switch into a double to control two separate lights outside. These are my outdoor lights and I wanted to have my soffit lights on a different switch than the switched outlet that I plug other stuff into. So I put a double switch in there a few years ago and I, whenever I put one in, I always 
insulated. That red wire I'm pointing at, that's actually the second phase that feeds the other plugs in the room. I'm now going to connect my neutral pigtail to the silver screw, which is the neutral side, or the larger of the two blade sizes on the plug. The smaller is the hot, the larger is the neutral, and of course the screw is colored silver. So I'm connecting my neutral wire here, and then what I'll do is I'll take the red moret off of the neutral wires, And of course, to do this properly, we do have to twist the wires together. Don't just stick the wire under the moret and tighten it down. That's not the way to do it. Get your electrician's pliers out and actually twist the wires together. And that is the correct way to make a bond so that we have a good physical bond as well. The wires are tightly twisted together and then we can put the moret back on top. That's the proper way to add a wire to an existing moret. And of course, use the right size moret when you're doing this. That's the proper way that electricians would do this to make it to code. Next, I'm going to put a hook in the wire leading to the fan. Now, this is not the energized wire. This is the one that's going to go to the normally open side of the switch so that when the switch is turned to the on position, that lead will be energized and put power up to the fan. So I put a hook in the wire and now I'm going to attach it to the screws. Again, because I'm not big on using the quick connect type uh, plugs, although they, they do work, I just prefer myself to get a good solid contact using the screw terminals and tighten them down so that they're good and tight. That way I've got a 100% perfect connection. Now it's time to start pushing some of the wires back in. As I say, this new switch plug combination is a little bit larger than the old switch, so um, I'm having to dress the wires a bit here to uh, get everything to fit, which was uh, more of a challenge than you would imagine because there's not a lot of room in these electrical boxes to begin with, and this one is quite heavily stuffed with wires. It's feeding multiple circuits. It's the main circuit coming into the room, and it's feeding out to feed the plugs. It's also feeding out to feed the ceiling fan, as well as two circuits going outside for the soffit plugs and for a, or for the soffit lights and for a plug that controls some decorative lights that are around my patio that are plugged into that. So there's a lot of wires in this box. There's actually more wires in this double box than there are in the triple box, which is next to it, which has basically just got the three switches in it, nothing else. Now comes the most hazardous part of this job because I'm actually going to be working on the live wire. Now again, if you're doing this yourself, you've got the power turned off because you're not an idiot like me. You're gonna turn the power off, but again, I'm gonna work with this live because, well, just like power line technicians, they don't turn off the power when they're working on it. Whoops, what happened here? I've only got eight volts. Hmm, something's not right here. Uh, I do believe that the problem here is my meter probe has decided to break. Let's go get a new set of uh, test lead. Okay, grab the leads from my Dr. Meter meter. And uh, yes, we still have 121 volts. So I said, this is the most hazardous part. I'm gonna have to uh, use my pliers and grab that bare wire and put a twist in it. So this is the point where I wanna make sure that I'm not touching anything ground, otherwise, I'm going to become the conductor. So I've got a hook in the wire. I'm just going to hook it around. No, I didn't get a shock there, by the way. Uh, I'm just going to hook it around the black screw and carefully place the black screw in. Now I can get away with this. You see, I'm touching the metal frame, but I don't have a ground wire hooked up to this. If I had hooked up a ground wire, then yeah, then I could get a nasty shock if I were to touch the hot wire. Now, once again, I'm going to wrap the terminals with black tape. This is, again, only because I'm working on a live circuit and I'm going to have to handle this thing to get it into the box and I don't really want to get it a shock. So 
I just wrap a, a strip of black tape around the terminals. That way it just gives me a barrier protection. Uh, not necessary to do it, and if the power is off, you don't have to worry about getting jolted. But again, I'm an idiot. I'm working with the power on. You don't have to tell me that I'm an idiot. You don't have to give me thumbs down because I'm working with it live because, well, most electricians do work live. The guys that know what they're doing, especially when you can't turn the power off, they, they have to work with it live. So we take all the precautions and uh, we don't electrocute ourselves. So we'll put the plate back on, final test. Fans working, let's check the plug. Plug in a light, what do you know? An old IKEA light still lights. Thanks for watching.